Welcome to our third Tuesday Spotlight Lecture. Um, this uh, lecture program is designed to uh, offer some disruptive narratives, uh, something a little bit alternative to the mainstream. And I'm really excited today to welcome our speaker, Dr. Fatma Kesh. Fatma is an Egyptologist and a heritage outreach specialist, and her skills in engagement and as a storyteller have led her to the founding of her very own initiative, The Place and the People. But since 2021, Fatma has also been the Egypt Exploration Society Grant Administrator in Cairo, and she's been overseeing our Heritage at Risk Grants program. So hopefully some of you are already familiar with Fatma through that. Uh, but today, for something slightly different, she'll be talking about Ahmed Kamal, uh, all about his life and career and his ongoing legacy in Egyptology today. Thank you so much, Fatma, for joining us for today's Tuesday Spotlight Lecture. Thanks. Hello, Carl. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Carl, for the introduction. And uh, thank you for uh, Charlotte and the whole uh, ES uh, staff for inviting me to uh, give uh, this uh, lecture. Uh, a great pleasure to, uh, to share with you uh, uh, some um, information about uh, Ahmad Kamel. Um, and uh, really happy to meet you all through uh, Zoom today. Uh, so my presentation today is, uh, as you can uh, see, is about um, Ahmed Kamel, uh, whom we consider uh, the first um, systematic <laughs> Egyptologist in Egypt, or the first uh, uh, the, the first uh, person to be called um, Egyptologist uh, for so many reasons, as we will uh, discuss uh, today. This research is part of. Uh, a longer uh, research project that I started in, uh, by the end of 2019 to retrace and reconstruct uh, the history uh, of contribution of Egyptian Egyptologists. Or to be more uh, accurate to what I'm uh, really doing, um, exploring the contribution of Egyptian scholars in general and exploring ancient Egypt and uh, not specifically uh, the ones whom we describe as Egyptologist, as, as the, the, with the meaning of the word as we mean it today. My first uh, encounter with uh, the history of Egyptology, I, uh, I owe it uh, to, to my work uh, uh, through the, uh, on the project of uh, the archives of Salim Hassan. Uh, that started already in 2013, uh, thanks to my work with the Library of Alexandria at uh, Kaltnat. Uh, we uh, received uh, more than, um, you can say, 2,500 uh, paper of the papers of documents of uh, different documents, excavations, uh, uh, recordings, uh, uh, correspondence of Salim Hassan. Uh, many drafts of his uh, publications, um, a huge number of photos uh, with the, uh, from the excavations, from uh, his uh, with his different colleagues, Egyptians and uh, foreign foreign Egyptologists, uh, that which led to a huge documentation project that is still continuing until now by my colleagues. Uh, that also uh, had the first stage of uh, a huge exhibition that was held in 2015 in the Library of Alexandria. And uh, through our study of the career of Salim Hassan, many uh, characters uh, showed up uh, that tell us the story of uh, Salim Hassan becoming uh, an Egyptologist or becoming a pioneer uh, archeo Egyptian archeologist uh, but in the first half of the 20th uh, century. Uh, thanks to uh, my, my, uh, my uh, own research and the research of uh, my dear colleagues uh, on the same project, uh, we collected also uh, many of uh, his own articles that were published in the Ahram newspaper, and which was the key uh, for us to uh, better understand the relation between Ahmed Kamel and Salim Hassan, because Salim Hassan, in a series of articles in the Ahram newspaper, uh, starting from 1922, uh, uh, he always uh, acknowledged uh, the many of his uh, knowledge and many of his uh, huge part of his uh, career uh, to uh, his professor Ahmed Kamel. 
uh, he also described how uh, Ahmad Kamal uh, was not only his professor teaching him uh, Egyptology at the first uh, official or formal um, se uh, section or department of Egyptology in the Egyptian uh, university, but he was also uh, considering him as his, the continuation of his own uh, career. And uh, he also considered him, we can exaggerate a bit as the word of Salim Hassan himself, that he considered him his own, uh, one of his uh, sons as well, that he also accompanied him, traveled with him uh, abroad, uh, visiting different, um, different departments of museums in Europe uh, uh, to visit and to study the Egyptian antiquities uh, in different uh, museums uh, in Berlin, in uh, Vienna, in, and in different uh, uh, countries. And in this series of uh, articles by Salim Hassan, uh, he uh, told the stories uh, about the, the antiquities and also about him um, traveling with his own uh, professor, uh, Ahmad Kamel. Uh, here, I would like to uh, bring this uh, important point for, for, my, for myself as I go through this uh, research of deconstructing the Egyptian uh, contribution in uh, Egyptology. Uh, I, I always prefer to describe it uh, exploring ancient Egypt, Egyptians exploring ancient Egypt, uh, because as we all agree that uh, Egyptology as a field of research starts with uh, the decipherment of hieroglyphs in 1822, uh, we had before this, uh, this time uh, long ages of uh, Egyptians and Arab scholars exploring uh, the monuments, the history, the language, and different occasions of, uh, of ancient Egypt. Um, like these two examples I have here, uh, Al-Makrizi, uh, a major uh, Egyptian historian who lived uh, in the 14th uh, century AD, and uh, Al-Gabarti, who lived, Abdul Rahman Al-Gabarti, who lived by the end of uh, the 18th century and the, the early years of the 19th century. Uh, these are just two examples of uh, where in their uh, many uh, books of many volumes, they included their own observations on uh, Egyptian, uh, ancient Egyptian uh, monuments. And of course, uh, this is just a small part of a huge research that was also done by uh, Professor Okesha Daly in his uh, very important contribution uh, of book, The Missing uh, Millennium. Um, as I go in this research, I also give you an uh, idea of the, the actual state of the research that uh, was the start that started, uh, you can say, some month ago in um, September, October, by researching and deconstructing the contribution of Rifa'a Tahtawi in, uh, in, in Egyptology or in exploring ancient Egypt. Uh, by uh, going through his uh, his career, uh, the Rifat Tahtawi, who was more known as uh, uh, a pioneer translator and uh, an important Egyptian intellect uh, in general, and an important statement also in the uh, times of Muhammad Ali, uh, as we uh, trace the the career of uh, Rifat Tahtawi, we see that since he started at a very early age. Uh, his own studies in uh, uh, France when he was sent in an official um, state uh, mission uh, of uh, students. Uh, he encountered at a very early age, uh, 22, 23, with Edmé François Jomar, who wrote the, who was one of the people uh, who created the project of the description de l'Egypte. Uh, this encounter made him uh, ex uh, fascinated already from a very early stage by ancient Egypt and by how fascinated these uh, the French people uh, and uh, many uh, of other foreign people that he met in France are fascinated by ancient Egypt and exploring its civilization. And he didn't know of many Egyptians at the time exploring their own civilization. He was then motivated to explore his own civilization and to write about uh, calling other Egyptian scholars to uh, 
uh, share with him this uh, passion as well and explore their civilization. Uh, by his uh, return uh, to Egypt, he was uh, charged from Muhammad Ali uh, with other uh, people to uh, found the first official uh, museum collection. I put it between uh, inverted commas because I'm not very convinced it was a museum in Al Asbakiya. But, anyways, Arifat Tahtawi was a major character in uh, founding this uh, collection in 1835. Uh, he uh, also explored and re-explored the writings of earlier uh, Arab and Egyptian scholars about ancient Egypt, like al makrizi and al Um And uh, in almost all of his uh, major uh, writings, Rifat Tahtawi was very keen on uh, describing or starting his introductions by describing why uh, we should uh, uh, be more interested to explore uh, the ancient Egyptian civilization and how it was one of the greatest, greatest civilization as he described it in this in one of his major books uh, highlighted here. Um, here I uh, would like to draw your attention about the, the major references that I, I use in this uh, research of exploring the Egyptian contribution in Egyptology and I'm sure uh, most of you uh, know about these important contributions, especially by uh, Professor Donald Reed, uh, the, the, the two volumes, uh, Who's Pharaohs and Contesting Antiquity in Egypt, and the very important contribution from the Ministry of, uh, of Tourism and Antiquities already in 2003 about Ahmad Kamel and Ahmad Yusuf, another important Egyptian uh, archaeologist and restorer. And uh, examples of other uh, publications by uh, other uh, colleagues who uh, also considered the Egyptian contribution in Egyptology. Uh, I was very lucky uh, last year, I think in, this was April 2021, uh, when um, I uh, collaborated with uh, my, uh, my dear friend and colleague Amira Nushoetzi in the Ahram online uh, website. Uh, to write an article for, uh, for the, uh, the audience in Egypt about uh, the life of Ahmad Kamel, where we uh, could uh, start by meeting his, one of his grandsons uh, living in Cairo, uh, who uh, very kindly uh, received us at his, uh, at his house, showed us many of uh, the original photos of his uh, grandfather, and sharing with us uh, stories that we uh, also couldn't find uh, written in the sources. Uh, like, for example, one interesting anecdote that uh, his name was not uh, originally Ahmad Kamel, but uh, the, the, this, the name Kamel was given to him. Kamel means in, in Arabic, uh, the, 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 com the perfection or the complete good, uh, good uh, manners. Uh, so from his good manners, he was given this uh, title uh, at school. Uh, why Ahmed Kamel uh, is, um, is a usually forgotten uh, scholar, Egyptian scholar? Uh, because he, uh, his major uh, contribution uh, in Egyptology uh, was, um, was rarely uh, cited or uh, described in uh, the references of the history of Egyptology only recently. But especially um, about this uh, dictionary uh, that he wrote of 22 volumes uh, that he started uh, writing uh, by the end of the 19th century already, and he spent a lot of time trying to find uh, the, the linguistic relations between ancient Egyptian and Arabic and other uh, semiotic uh, languages uh, of ancient civilization of the same uh, name, uh, surrounding region uh, to Egypt. Um, and for um, until 2003, this uh, volume was only in the possession of uh, his uh, grandson that I showed you uh, his photo earlier. And no one was ever uh, interested to publish this uh, volume in the life of Ahmed Kamel or after his uh, death, unfortunately. Um, and uh, what is also confirming this is this piece of news from Al-Ahram 
1960 with the title uh, asking why did uh, colonial powers stopped uh, the publication of this dictionary by Ahmed Kamel, uh, co uh, making the comparisons between ancient Egyptian and Arabic. Uh, well, I, I uh, don't like to go in the, 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 uh, the details or the detailed discussion full of, uh, uh, full of uh, many details, uh, more than the time we have uh, now about uh, colonization and uh, and why uh, Egyptian Egyptologists were not uh, acknowledged uh, strongly before uh, these recent years. But I use this uh, piece of news as uh, a confirmation of that uh, of the public the dictionary not being published until 2003 when uh, the Supreme Council of Antiquities decided to publish the drafts as they are. Uh, in uh, 22 uh, volumes that we can um, buy easily at uh, the shop of the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities today. But luckily as well, uh, only two years ago, uh, the Library of Alexandria was offered the whole original collection of dictionaries, uh, of volumes of the dictionary uh, by the grandson uh, and the Library of Alexandria started a study, a restudy, uh, and um, um, like uh, uh, to be uh, to, to review how to publish this uh, dictionary to, to be used as a reference. And this will be uh, coming uh, up in 2022. One of the uh, major contributions of Ahmed Kamel was uh, the, the class of uh, the first formal class of ethology uh, founded in the department uh, in, in the, the first Egyptian, what we can call the first um, formal Egyptian university uh, that was, was founded in 1908. Uh, after many trials of, uh, of in, uh, having uh, formal schools of uh, Egyptology that were open and closed, open and closed, starting uh, 1870, uh, in uh, 1912, we have the graduation of the first uh, class taught by Ahmed Kamel, uh, and one of the graduates was uh, Salim Hassan and uh, their photo showing them in a trip uh, to Luxor. Uh, on the right hand side, a piece of news from Al Ahram in 1923, uh, telling that um, unfortunately on the day where uh, Ahmed Kamel uh, died, the Ministry of Education, the Egyptian Ministry of Education decided to reopen uh, the project that he uh, called for, which is the revival of the first systematic school of Egyptology. Madrasa al Sain al Qadim, or the school of al Sain al Qadim, the ancient uh, tongue uh, that was uh, founded for the first time in 1870. This pushed me to try to reconstruct uh, the history of Egyptology education or the awareness of including classes about ancient Egypt and later uh, described as Egyptology education in Egypt since. Uh, the, the first half of the 18th century until uh, the revival of Madrasa al Sain al Qadim. This, uh, these trials started by uh, the classes um, introduced by Rifa al Tahtawi in his uh, own uh, founded the school, uh, Al Alson, or the School of Languages, uh, where he mainly taught uh, translation uh, to his uh, students. Uh, but also from his fascination that we uh, discussed earlier of by ancient Egypt, uh, he insisted on including uh, classes of history of ancient Egypt in this uh, in the curricula of this, the school of languages. Um, later on, we find the different uh, pieces of information and the references about the courses about ancient Egypt given at the Institut d'Egypte the French Institute d'Egypte in 1859. Um, in 1869, there was a, a success of founding the first uh, formal and systematic uh, 
uh, School of Egyptology, founded with the collaboration of uh, Heinrich Bruch, the German uh, Egyptologist who lived in Egypt by this uh, time, the, the, uh, supported by the Khedive Ismail himself, and also the a contribution from Rafa al Tahtawi and uh, Ali uh, Basha Mubarak, uh, another Egyptian scholar who was interested in ancient Egypt also, but th this is the topic of another uh, lecture. Um, this school of al Hussein al-Qadzim, uh, the first systematic school of Egyptology in Egypt, didn't live uh, long, unfortunately. And only 12 uh, students graduated from this uh, school. The, the most uh, insisting Egyptologist in this group was Ahmed Kamel. Uh, who tried uh, by all his uh, means uh, to uh, to get uh, a job at uh, the, the the museum and at the service uh, d'antiquité at the time, uh, but the, unfortunately he couldn't succeed until uh, 1880. In 1880, uh, as he joined the 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 museum uh, in Bulak. After he worked for some months as only uh, a translator uh, in uh, the service d'antiquité, uh, he could revive uh, again and ask again for the revival of uh, a school of Egyptology at the museum. Again, it, it didn't live uh, long, only for four years, closed again. Uh, he kept his trials uh, going on until uh, he succeeded finally in uh, uh, the private Egyptian uh, university in 1908, and also at the public uh, university starting at the same time. Um, he kept uh, also his own uh, trial to not keep Egyptology in one school, uh, one formal school described as a school of Egyptology, but also try to include curricula of Egyptology at uh, other uh, higher uh, school, like the higher uh, teachers uh, college at the time. Only in 1923, there was uh, a revival for uh, the, the school that was founded by Heinrich Brook, uh, the Khedive Ismail, Rifal Tahtawi, and Ali Mubarak on the day where uh, Ahmed Kamel died. Here we find uh, on the right side, uh, the piece of news from uh, nine, 1892 uh, announcing that uh, finally we have uh, officially uh, the, the, the appointment of Ahmed Kamel, uh, an Egyptian in the uh, museum. Officially he was appointed only at that uh, time. On um, the, the left hand side, this is a document from uh, uh, the book I, I mentioned earlier about Ahmed Kamel and Ahmed Yusuf, um, about the, the official document uh, of the, the, the public, the Ministry of Public Works, where uh, they, um, where we can retrace the trials of uh, Ahmed Kamel being appointed in the uh, service uh, d'antiquité, and then he where he kept on trying until being officially appointed only in 1892. Uh, just a glimpse of the uh, Boulat Museum uh, here. Um, I like uh, this uh, special detail about the Boulat Museum where we find uh, the first uh, uh, guide, uh, printed guide of the museum that was written by uh, Auguste Mariette in French. He was, it was translated by Abdallah of Saud, uh, the translator of uh, one of the major translators at the, the Service d'Antiquité and at the museum. And also uh, is one of the students, the brilliant students of Rifat Tahtawi. So I like this detail because we see the continuation uh, of, uh, of generations. Rifat Tahtawi, his interest in ancient Egypt, his students becoming translators at the Egyptian uh, Museum of Boulet. So we see uh, a chain of generations uh, starting at this uh, early, uh, at these early times uh, of uh, founding the different institutions that managed the Egyptian antiquities in Egypt at the time. 
Ahmed Kamal was not only uh, a formal Egyptologist interested in uh, his uh, own project of uh, ancient Egyptian language and its relation to uh, Arabic and other ancient uh, languages, uh, not only um, his work as inspector and uh, his work as uh, excavator and archaeologist in different uh, sites, uh, mainly uh, Deir al Barsha and uh, Heliopolis, and his own publications of the, the excavations he's done. But he, he was a whole project of, uh, of a scholar, uh, excavator, and also um, his own uh, project being calling for the knowledge, the wider knowledge of ancient Egypt uh, by uh, the general audience in Egypt. That's why he had uh, a series of articles um, uh, written uh, for the general audience in Arabic, uh, in Al Ahram a newspaper, and also in Al Lawa newspaper. So I, I, that's why I like to describe him as a whole, a project of of uh, of, of a brilliant intellect, not only of uh, a formal Egyptologist. Uh, why we have the Boulet Print House here? Uh, this uh, Boulet Print House was the, the first uh, official uh, state print house founded in the times of uh, Muhammad Ali uh, to publish all sorts of, uh, of official uh, books, of uh, uh, school books, of all kinds of uh, publications. Uh, during the work on the documentation of this uh, print house, uh, by a project at the Library of Alexandria, they discovered the early, uh, uh, the first uh, prints and copies of the early um, contribution of Ahmed Kamel, uh, of, uh, of, of publications that were published uh, later uh, with his own uh, comments and corrections on the, origin, the first, the earlier uh, copies. Uh, that's why I, I like to mention uh, the Boulet print house here. Uh, one of the major contribution we uh, know about uh, Ahmed Kamel was also uh, his uh, uh, his supervision for uh, the movement, the moving of uh, the mummies that were uh, discovered uh, at the Deir al Bahri Kashet in 1882, uh, and him being a major, the major supervisor uh, responsible to supervise the 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 moving from Luxor. Uh, on the Dahabeya until reaching the Bulaq Museum in 1882. Uh, this was, of course, a, co a collective uh, project that uh, was uh, done under the, the, the direction uh, of uh, uh, Gaston Maspero at the time and uh, other many other Egyptologists. The, ma the, major, the main name at the time was Emil uh, Brooks the brother of Heinrich uh, Brooks, and Ahmed Kamel being the major uh, Egyptian uh, Egyptologist in this uh, group uh, that succeeded to uh, move the mummies from Deir al-Bahri Kashet and from Luxor to Cairo. Uh, and uh, this, was, uh, this story was uh, immortalized in one of the major um, Egyptian movies and one of uh, most important uh, 100 movies in the history of Egyptian uh, cinema, uh, Al Mumie, or the ninth of counting the years by Shadzi Abdul Salam, telling the story of Abdul Rasul uh, family who discovered first the secret of the royal kashat of Deir al Bahari until uh, how uh, later on uh, the Egyptian uh, museum uh, people succeeded. Uh, with the police, of course, to uncover the secrets of this cachet and move the mummies uh, to the Egyptian Museum. Oh, so we missed something. Um, Yes, in the um, in this in these times and uh, by retracing the, the the history of the first museums, the contribution of Ahmed Kamel, the the whole context uh, where he he lived, uh, 
uh, I also come across the different uh, pieces of news from the Ahram archive of how um, uh, telling us the, the steps of the, the different institutions, Egyptian and international, collaborating to found and to open the different uh, museums, first museums in Egypt, uh, like the Boulet Museum, the project of founding the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir, uh, the Islamic, the Museum of Islamic Art, and here the piece of news about the Greco-Roman Museum in 1891. This is this gives us the, the, the historical context and the, the different uh, events that were taking place in the life of these early uh, scholars and um, our hero today, Ahmed uh, Kamal. Uh, of course, uh, I like to bring this, uh, this um, Egyptianism uh, uh, movement here in our discussion. To, uh, as an evidence of how the, the, in 1919, the leaders of uh, the 1919 revolution and the people who believed in this uh, revolution and the independence, the, the call for, for independence of Egypt after the fall of the Ottoman Empire, after the end of uh, World War I, and uh, calling to have one unified uh, identity away from the religion, away from politics. They recalled the ident their identity as uh, ancient Egypt, as the, the, the going to the, their roots as ancient Egyptians and um, having the ancient Egyptian civilization as uh, the, the symbol of their identity, uh, their chosen identity at the time. That led to a huge uh, movement of uh, Egyptianizing the art, uh, the literature, as we see here, this, the, the major uh, symbol of the, this time, one of them is the, the statue of uh, Nahdet Masr or the Renaissance of Egypt that was uh, founded by uh, crowdfunding, by the way, <laughs> at the time. Uh, Egyptians from all over Egypt sending uh, their own uh, financial contribution to have this uh, statue uh, finished by the artist uh, Mahmoud uh, Mokhtar. I thank you all for, uh, for your attention today. Thanks so much, Fatma. That was such a great presentation. And uh, beyond Ahmed Kamal, it also brought in uh, a lot of context, which I think a lot of people would appreciate. Um, thank you so much, Fatma. This has been a really fascinating uh, Tuesday Spotlight lecture. And um, for those um, interested, Fatma did mention the work of Professor Donald Reed. Uh, and on the 31st of May, uh, we will be holding a keynote lecture with him talking about decolonization and Egyptian archaeology, uh, which will build even further on uh, what Fatma has presented today. Uh, and I think just to end with uh, such a, uh, it's such a fitting tribute, I think, to Ahmed Kamal that he continues to influence modern generations of uh, Egyptian scholars in the same way that you talked about this sort of generational handing over, uh, you know, in order to further the future of uh, Egyptian Egyptology. And um, that's, of course, exactly what's happening now. So it's really fitting, Fatma, that you're uh, here presenting on Kamal himself. Uh, and I think we should all um, applaud Kamal posthumously for his enormous efforts. 24 volumes of a dictionary, uh, when you think that a whole team conducted the, the Wörterbuch, I think it's quite an extraordinary achievement. So looking forward to seeing that later in 2022 as well uh, from your colleagues in Alexandria. I think that's going to be really extraordinary. Thank you so much, Carl. And of course, it's a, how to say, it's a work in progress. Uh, uh, research. So um, I hope that uh, there will be more information coming up in the next phase, inshallah. Super. Thank you so much, Fatma. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. I'm glad that you've all enjoyed it. Uh, do visit the ES website where you'll find lots more events and uh, we'll see you at the next one very soon. Bye for now, everyone. <laughs>